Hello, I'm FDA Commissioner Peggy Hamburg. One of the great joys of my job is getting around meeting and talking with my fellow colleagues at this wonderful agency. It's the people of the FDA, more than 11,000 of us, that make this such a strong and vital organization. Finding ways that allow everyone to be their best is one of my highest priorities. That is why, here at the FDA, we're committed to maintaining a safe and accessible work environment for everyone, especially colleagues with disabilities who may need reasonable accommodations, such as a parking space closer to the building, automatic door openers, or specialized computer equipment or software. Over the next few minutes, my colleague George Strait and I will introduce you to some remarkable people, men and women who are a vital part of the FDA's mission, professionals who can use their expertise to the fullest, at least in part because of the reasonable accommodations they have at their FDA work sites. At an FDA building. The FDA has all of the parking spaces, ramps, and other typical accommodations for physically challenged employees that one would expect. But there are other accommodations that are breakthroughs. You are about to meet five remarkable FDAers, a chemist, a physicist, two program analysts, and a director. Their expertise makes them remarkable. Expertise that is being used to protect the public health because the FDA has found unique and innovative ways to mitigate their physical and sensory challenges. A woman walks with a cane. Every morning, Cheryl Sledge Gonzalez feels lucky just to be able to come to work. On September 26, 1989, I will never forget that date. An elevator dropped me about 10 stories in the federal building in 26 Federal Plaza. We got on at 33 to go to the main floor. I was supposed to meet my husband there for lunch. And the last stop we made was the 29th floor. The next stop was supposed to be the sixth floor. But we didn't stop at six. We didn't stop at the lobby. We just fell to the bottom of that building and bounced. And they, there really was a coil down there or we might have died. It herniated multiple discs in my lower lumbar region. Uh, I couldn't stand up straight. I walked leaning to the right for almost a year. It took um, acupuncture to even stand me up straight. And I had ever increasing amounts of pain. Couldn't sleep, couldn't sit, couldn't stand, couldn't walk. I was just miserable. My name is Cheryl Sledge Gonzalez and my official title is Program Analyst, Labor and Employee Relations Liaison. Without an accommodation, it would be totally impossible for me to work every day. When I'm at work, I have a chair that has a very soft bottom, which allows me to sit for longer periods of time than normal because the rods in my back, when I sit down, they jam into whatever I'm sitting on. So that creates friction and tension, and it sets off spasms in about 20 minutes. This is what they call a sit-stand station because I stand up most of the time so I can adjust the height of the monitor by, with this arm and I can adjust the height of the keyboard with this tray that is attached to the desk under the lip of the desk and I have this pedestal that I prop my legs up on usually the right, sometimes the left, sometimes I switch up left foot or right foot but it's principally for the right leg to get the pressure off the right leg because there's a lot of neurological damage that fit into the right leg as a result of the elevator accident. I have issues with my shoulders okay. and with my arms and yeah. sometimes I just tingle everywhere. So they gave me a headset so that I could wear a headset and not have to reach for a telephone and hold a telephone and cock my head to the side because after a while that's going to give me a problem. In addition to the, the sit-stand station and the chair, I also have a couch because some days I just need to lay down for about 10 to 20 minutes to get the pressure off my lower spine and my legs. So then I'll go lay over there on my back or on my side and take something with me and read it or I'll take a pad with me and lay on my side and write it and then come back and type it. I'm pretty productive. I like my job. I like work. If I had to stay home, I know I would go crazy. I come to work to work, so I, I don't come here to fool around. Indeed. Cheryl's productivity is why she's been continually promoted throughout her career. Other accommodations are more high-tech. Hi, my name is Matt Schwerin. I'm a physicist with CDRH. Matt uses sign language. I work in the lab with medical devices. 
And uh, yes, there are many accommodations uh, for the deaf person here at FDA, especially for communication. A monitor on his desk shows him on a live video feed. One outstanding technology, a new thing, is the VP, the video phone. He makes a typing motion. We used to use the TTY, but now we have new technology, as you can see. He gestures to the video phone. Typically, I would call a hearing person. The, I would see an interpreter. On my screen, the interpreter will see me. The interpreter has a headset on to talk with the hearing person and would facilitate the call back and forth between me and the hearing person. It's an outstanding accommodation. It makes the conversation more efficient. They call my number were automatically routed to the uh, video relay service, and they will hook up to me. A light blinks above the monitor. Matt presses a remote. A signer listens to the caller, relays the information to Matt. Hello, Matt here. He responds, and the signer tells the caller what Matt wants to communicate. Hi, this is Matt. Who are you? Facing a camera mounted above the monitor, Matt communicates with the signer via a live video feed. Good to hear from you. Thanks. Thanks for your time also. Bye-bye. Another thing, critical thing for my job is having, uh, having interpreting services. There's many meetings, seminars, even things like events uh, related to work. We have interpreters uh, make things e effective communication between, between me and my colleagues. Words appear over interlapping images of several employees at work. Empowered challenges. A woman walks with the aid of a seeing eye dog. My name is Rita Harrison. I'm a program analyst for the Atlanta District Office, and I was born with an eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa. It's basically deterioration of the retina. Perfect, good boy. When I started working, I only had an accommodation of a copy holder that clamped to the side of a desk. And I used reading glasses that were really huge and thick like Coke bottle bottoms. I was introduced to enlargement software for computers. In 2000, when I was diagnosed with, with breast cancer, and I lost a lot of my vision, most of my vision, from the chemotherapy drugs. And what I did to continue to do the type of work that I did was I switched from enlargement software on the computer to total speech. Rita understands this seemingly fast and muffled speech pattern because her hearing is more acute, compensating in part for her loss of sight. I'm able to do everything that I was able to do before I lost all my sight. Such as go through her email. Looking in my Outlook and I'm just Address, scrolling down employer, to different, to different emails, and then when I get to an email that I need to read and open, with one key command, I will just let it start reading. The Eric number is apparently still experiencing difficulties. And Eric's having telephone difficulties, so this is a Braille display and it's connected to the computer. It's just another way to read, rather than reading listening to the speech on the on the computer I'm just reading it in Braille. This is a Braille Plus. It's a note taker. It's like a PDA for, you know, that sighted people have, but it's it's for blind and visually impaired individuals. I'm able to take notes and just by pressing a couple buttons I can for example a Blackberry for the blind. <laughs> And when Rita is tired of listening to the computer or is in a meeting where the sound would be disruptive. If I don't want to listen to the speech, then all I do is turn this on. It's connected via Bluetooth. And I'm able to just read everything in Braille off of this little 18 cell Braille display. Everything that is on this Braille display is coming to me from the note taking device. This is an iPal Solo. It takes a snapshot of the piece of paper that you lay on the table and it converts it to audio output. Benefits of integrating an FT into GovTrip. So that I'm able to read everything on this page. Now, a man drives a car with a placard on the dashboard reading, please do not eat, drink, or smoke in government vehicles. My name is Ray Decker. Uh, so I've been with the agency for 37 and a half years. 
and I'm the director for the Color Certification and Technology Division with Food and Drug. I got polio when I was two and a half years old, so it's been with me all my life, and I'm 63 now. It means that, well, post-polio syndrome, and uh, my use of my legs is less and less. I have a car that uh, the agency has uh, put hand controls on, so I can go to meetings, uh, uh, both locally and uh, for their distances. On this car, all they do is simply put a mechanism on here, like I'll show you right now. I will pull it down towards my body, and we accelerate. And if I want to slow down, I just let go of the gas, and then I press towards the floor, and we slow down. This is one of the simplest things they can put on a car to make it usable by anybody who doesn't have use of their legs, um, but have use of their arms. I don't use this for my personal car. I use it for all government business, going to meetings. Uh, if I do have a long trip, I can take it home and then drive from my home to uh, the meeting. He parks in um, a handicapped space. Uh, but again, it's, 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 it's for government business. That's what it's, what it's for. I have a scooter. Um, they put uh, uh, hand access on all the uh, bathrooms that I use here um, and uh, on some of the other offices that I use. Without these accommodations, uh, uh, I wouldn't be able to do my job uh, like I do now. It would be very hard. The first uh, 20 years that I was with the agency, you never saw a scooter, you never saw uh, anything like that. Uh, a, a car was unheard of. Getting to and from my car, which was outside, it was uh, uh, a long trip. Um, and going to meetings, uh, I always had to rely on somebody else. If I didn't have the mobility that I have now, I would be probably still sitting at a desk uh, in a, uh, you know, in a very small office and uh, editing forms. Uh, my whole career has opened up with the ability to inter and intermix with people and uh, the public. Um, I can do almost anything anybody else can do. Uh, and uh, right now, I'm at the, at the highest grade you can get in the federal government and still be a GS uh, civil servant, uh, which wouldn't have been a, a possible you know, without the, uh, the accommodations that I've had. More words appear over images of the employees. Challenges, mobility, now in a laboratory. I'm Judy Summers Gates, and I work out of the Philadelphia District Office and Laboratories as a color chemist, working with foods, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices, and doing color analysis and all of that. I've been low vision all of my life. I was born that way. But then later on, I acquired multiple sclerosis, and that has led to a number of issues with mobility and stamina and vision. And I also have problems with dexterity, and I use various types of software to compensate for some of that on the computer. And in warmer months, due to the MS, I lose my voice. It becomes pretty unintelligible. So I need to shift over to, to a speech synthesizer, similar to the one Stephen Hawking uses. Hello, my name is Judy Summers Gates. My hearing is OK. Please speak normally. When you have a difficulty with speeches, people often assume also that you can't hear well, so they're going to start yelling at you. <laughs> so this is to keep the volume down for everybody's sake. This takes the place of my speaking voice on the telephone. I'm involved in a lot of conference calls, a lot of meetings, a lot of face-to-face -face interactions with consumers. So I'll have this with me to do a little bit of the talking and make the communications a little easier. You can program whole, whole scripts into it where it can read a whole page for you. You can capture the conversations, print them out. Next up we have, this is a video magnifier. It can be used for all types of situations. It's very portable. You can also change the background. I can use it to scan things on a shelf to find a bottle label that I need. You can capture an image. She takes a snapshot of words on a page. And hold it. I often use this to reach into an instrument to do some quality assurance work. I can show you some of the different software that I have on my laptop that I use on a regular basis. One is a screen magnification program called Zoom Text. It both enlarges and also has speech output, so you can use one or the other or both. Zoom Text User Interface. The Advisory Committee for Employees with Disabilities takes great pleasure in presenting its 2009 annual report. I also have Dragon Dictate, which is a voice recognition program that I use for days when my hands aren't typing too well. As she speaks into a headset, her words type out on her laptop screen. This is a demonstration of the voice recognition software. Vials sit in a cabinet. This is a different use of a, of a mobile closed circuit TV camera. Oftentimes, people are using these to read and write at their desks. I'm using it to work in the hood and magnifying the image of what's going on in the hood on my laptop screen over here. I can use it to monitor reactions, such things such as a thermometer while a reaction's going on. I can have a good view of the thermometer and catch the temperature. 
but this is also an additional safety feature because this means I don't have to lean in as close or get into the hood up near some of the glass or reactions as things as they're running with having the magnification capability as it's being used here. Without the accommodations, I wouldn't be able to use the computer properly to manipulate my data, to use spreadsheets, to interact with my, my peers, to publish journal articles, to give presentations. I do a lot of work with consumer groups and outreach. So I take my tools with me on the road when I'm going somewhere, and people are used to seeing me set things up and, and getting down to business. Protecting the public health. Well, as you've just seen, we take a lot of time and put a lot of effort into making sure everyone at FDA has what he or she needs to do just that. And let me mention one more accommodation, FlexiPlace. This allows employees to work from home on a schedule agreed to by management. It's one of the most commonly requested accommodations and is often approved as long as the essential functions of the job can be performed from the requested location. If you'd like more information on reasonable accommodations, click on the Employee Resources tab on FDA's intranet homepage and then click on Reasonable Accommodations and Accessibility under Equal Employment Opportunity. At the FDA, we take our responsibility toward all our employees seriously as we strive to make the work environment as accessible as possible for everyone so we can all work effectively to protect the public health. Thanks for watching. This video was a joint project of FDA's Office of Equal Employment Opportunity and Diversity Management and the Advisory Committee for Employees with Disabilities. This video has been described by the Media Access Group at WGBH with funding from the FDA. Described by Michael Langarzo. Read by Kate O'Toole.